Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Beards, Bourbon, and Games. I'm your co-host, Cocker Corey. With, with me, I have Mike. Hello. And you know what I like, Mike? What do you like? Backwards compatibility. No, not you. It's the best thing ever. You get to play all your favorite games all in one location. I'm a huge fan of that, of emulation. And quite frankly, I am disappointed with how Sony handled it. And the PlayStation 5's lack of backwards compatibility. Check out the video link below. <laughs> so, with that being said, I'm going to show you how to play... Uh, retro games on your Xbox. <gasps> Sacrilege. <laughs> so it is possible through a program known as RetroArch. So this is a quick start guide. And I know, just one note on this, this is not an in-depth guide. This is a quick start guide. So if you're not, you know, setting up emulation is not your thing, uh, but you just want something fast to get started, maybe play some older games, this is the guide for you to get started. And then from there, you can jump into the rabbit hole. So. To get started, first thing we're going to do is pull up the dev kit from the store. So we're going to open up our store app. And then we're going to search for uh, just type in dev. DV, and you will see dev kit activation top. Be sure to select the one for your appropriate console. Uh, I have an Xbox Series X, so I will select the one that has the Series S and Series X on it. Now, if you have an Xbox One, you need to pick the one with the Xbox One. Now we will launch that application after it downloads. Now, the important thing to note here is you do have to have a developer account, which at the time of recording this video, I think I only paid $20 for it. It may be $30 normally, but uh, you have to you do have to pay $20 to become a developer for Xbox. And so this is before you can begin, you know, got to make sure you got a computer with those specs. Uh, pretty much any computer can handle that or laptop. So I had to go through and make sure that I had everything installed. Uh, I don't think I had Visual Studio 2017 on there. So when you click next, it will direct you to a URL. You have to go to that URL and log in with your Xbox developer account. Um, and then it will prompt you to enter that code once you sign up with your developer account. And you can add a console um, and key that in, which I'm going to show you here. This is what that website looks like. Click the plus sign, enter activation code. Pause for dramatic effect. <laughs> and then type in the code that you see on your console. Now, what I recommend is getting to this point on your computer before you do the activation code, because that code can expire. Then you have to redo the whole process. So once you add your Series X console or Series X S or your Xbox One, it'll be listed there uh, with the general information, uh, such as your console ID and your serial number, all that fun stuff. All right, so once you add it, it's going to say activating. And then it gives you an option to switch to developer mode, which you can restart later and do it, or you can switch and restart. So that's the thing about it. You have to actually launch developer mode as though it's an app from your Xbox. Because it's on a completely separated partition on your hard drive. So it's going to go through booting. Uh, don't be alarmed. If it takes just a little bit longer the first time you activate it there. It does drag out for a little bit. Um, just enough to make you nervous, to make you sweat. All right, I'm already lost. Start over. <laughs> <laughs> Step one. Get Corey take to do it for you. <laughs> take the Xbox, put it back into the box. Step two, take it back to wherever you bought it. Kid. You don't deserve That's an that. Xbox. <laughs> but this is very exciting. Um, okay. And before I go on to that, here is the developer console interface. So we can see here... Uh, you have some options there. So what we are going to do, first thing is get connected to Xbox Live. And so if you're connected to an Ethernet cable, I think it connects automatically. I had to go and connect my Wi-Fi. Um, I'm trying to remember if I, if I did wire. If I looked up, I'm pretty sure I had to do wireless. So we went to the console, console settings, and this is where I'm navigating through. I'm going to go to my network settings. And I'm going to set up my wireless network because I didn't have it hooked up. So I go through, refresh my internet here, and then I connect to it. I find my internet. Scuttle dome. And then, yeah, that's right, scuttle dome. <laughs> so I got myself connected. Uh, the next thing I need to do is uh, to add an existing account. I, I do that eventually here. So I'm gonna go into remote access settings. Um, I'm going to set a username and password. Now, that'll be very important later. So, uh, go in remote access settings, put in your username and your password. Um, 
and I'll show you that a little bit later. Remember that. Remember that IP address there at the bottom right. We'll be revisiting that. So now we're gonna press the start button and then select manage dev storage. Now this is very important. Whatever you set here is the total amount of hard drive space it's gonna allocate for your de developer mode. That's meaning this is gonna be all the space that you set on your uh, set your emulators, your ROMs into, um, and that takes away the space from your from your hard drive. So however much space you take here, that means that space will be missing in retail mode. Can you expand that later on? Not that I'm aware. I think once you set it, it's there. And you have to completely reformat it. Oh crap! At least I, at least I did. Now there could be a way. I just didn't notice it, but I did this once before and took up 120 gigabytes and regretted it later. So, <laughs> so just choose wisely there. Um, I think I ended up doing about 60 there in the video. All right, now we're going to switch over to the PC side of it, and we're going to go to RetroArch.com, uh, and we're going to click the Downloads tab. We'll scroll down. We're going to find the Xbox Series in one tab, and we're going to download the Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 UMP package. And we're going to click the Download option to download the the, the actual RetroArch application. So it has to be in those two. Yeah, wow, words are hard. Specifically because we are going to load those applications onto our Xbox Series X through our PC. Okay, so I have my files here. I'm just going to put them in a nice little clean folder because, you know, I have to do that. So you remember that address I told you to remember? So we're going to type it in our web browser here. Press enter. It's going to tell me that, hey, this doesn't look private because it's on my personal network. And that password, username, password I set, we're going to type that in here. And this is actually our web Xbox interface to a web browser. So this is how we're going to add our applications to it. Uh, for those familiar with side loading applications in Andro Android, that's side loading is basically the term. Click, click add. Now we're going to choose our file. So we're going to pick our. Um, RetroArch file, actually. And so uh, you'll see here, I, I look at it, I'm thinking twice there because I'm trying to remember the pattern, but it's actually the RetroArch file for, first. Then we click Next, and it's going to ask us for the dependencies. Now that runtime package is the dependency, so just click and drag. Click OK. It's going to go through this. Now don't be alarmed if this process gets stalled. Um, two times I've installed this and I've had it hanging up, but I just left it alone and eventually it does complete even though it looks like it's not going. At least it doesn't go backwards like the old installers. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, I, I had it hanging up at that upload 100% complete forever at one time. And I was like, okay, what's going on? All right, so now we have the app on our Xbox. Okay, back to the console. We'll see it here under the games and apps. We actually have RetroArch. Um, over on the right hand side there, I, I clicked add existing account just to add my Xbox Live account to it. Otherwise, it won't let you launch that. So to keep that in mind. Now, this is what RetroArch will look like when you first load it. Do not be alarmed by it. Everything's missing because you've got to download it. So we go to the online updater. We're going to click update assets. And then when you do that, I got the screen, bring it back, and you'll have your icons. So we do have to go to the online updater to download some of the missing assets. Um, and I, I went ahead and just went down the list here and updated the databases, the overlays, and the shaders. Overachiever. I'd rather have too much than not enough. <laughs> And there, there are a couple things here. Now, configuration file, you don't really have to touch that. Uh, the only time that you would have to touch that is in the older version at the time of recording this, you had to have a separate profile for PlayStation 2 emulation. 
Um, but I think they've actually changed that now. We'll probably do a dedicated PlayStation 2 retro art video on this. Okay, we're gonna go to settings. And first thing we're gonna take a look here is just look at our options. So we go to drivers, input, it's set to uh, UWP, universal windows platform, and you have X input. I just leave it at UWP. Now the controller, that should be defaulted to X input, which is correct because that's the input type that uh, Xbox uses. Now video, you have three options here. You have GL, Direct3D 12, and Direct3D 11. I left it on GL for the purpose of this video. Like if you just wanna jump in the quick emulation um, on your console, you can do that option. I think PlayStation 2 has to have Direct 3D 12. Right, now we're going to go on to input, and this is where we can configure some things with our controllers. So you can see different things here, options. I'm actually going to scroll to hotkeys, and then I'm going to select the menu toggle option. So these are different button combinations that you can set. So I'm going to set it to hold start for two seconds, and what that will do is while I'm in a game, I can hold start and then actually quit the game from the RetroArch menu. So that way you don't have to turn the console off and turn it back on the Switch games. All right, now, now that I've said everything, what I'd like to do is good practice. I don't think you have to do this for later versions, but I always quit RetroArch to make it save the changes and then go back in. And now we're gonna load a core. So we're gonna scroll down and you have a huge list of emulators, a huge list. Um, to choose from a lot of it's already pre pre downloaded um but you can go to you know the online updater and pull some more if needed all right so now we're going to transfer the files over to the xbox so as you can see here i have a folder and i'm going to show you how to make that folder so that way you don't have to manually type in that ip address every single time We'll click add new network location we're going to click next choose the network and this is where you're going to type in the address for your xbox and then it's backslash so it's a little bit different so it's uh, backslash development files after the ip address and then you just name it and i call it xbox click finish and that'll take you directly to the folder here and what you'll do is you'll go into windows apps and look for the one that has the RetroArch version number. I think it's like 196 or something like that. I could be mistaken on that version. But you'll see this is our RetroArch folder. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some folders. First, I'm gonna add a, uh, a system folder. Then add a saves folder. Saves. <laughs> saves, yeah. Um, And then I also make a games folder. And you can also add a save states folder if you want to. Uh, system folder is the, one of the important ones because a lot of emulators that require standalone BIOS files have to have that system. So just keep that in mind. We see we have all the cores listed in here. Uh, and then the games, of course, is where we're gonna put our games. So I'm gonna go ahead and create some folders. I always recommend instead of just dumping all your ROMs into one location, make subdirectories like S SNES, uh, N64, uh, PSX for PlayStation, PS2 for PlayStation 2. It just, it, it'll save you a headache in the long run. And you see, I, I put some sample games that I own here. Now I did list some PlayStation ones there, but I decided to pull the PlayStation ones from this video. And the reason for that is we actually have a dedicated uh, Duck Station app that you all can look forward to. We're really excited because it has native 4K scaling, oh. which, which makes Mike all kinds of happy. Oh. So, so now, as you can see there from the video, we did go into, we're going to do a manual scan and we're going to manually uh, navigate to our directory. You have to go to the S drive, program files, Windows apps, select your RetroArch folder. And that's what it looks like there. And we'll click our games folder that we, we created. And then navigate to uh, whichever one we want to import. In this case, I am going to import Game Boy Advance 
So next, I'm going down. I'm going to select my core, my system name. Then I'm going to select the default core. This is telling RetroArch which emulator to use to emulate these games. So I'm going to scroll down and select uh, VBA next. That's the one I want to use. You can pick the other ones that you want. File extensions, if you have a special file extension you're looking for, you can select it here. Scan recursively means that it'll scan a folder within a folder. So if you recall our PC video, it's the same settings, essentially. Scan inside archive. So if you have all your ROMs zipped up, you would want to enable that option. And then click Start and Scan. So what it'll do then is it'll pick up all your emulators or all your, excuse me, all your ROMs. So you can see I have my two Yu-Gi-Oh games. I love the Yu-Gi-Oh game Boy Fans games. They're so good. Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, we're going to do manual scan again, and now we are going to go to Dreamcast, and I'm going to scan that directory. I'm going to select the system name uh, for the Sega Dreamcast. And we're going to select our core, uh, which it has one, I think. It's, uh, it's not recast. Um, Blackcast. Close. And it's, it's actually programmed to look for the default file extension. So sometimes you don't even have to put a file extension in there, but you may have to type it in. So keep that in mind. So now we got everything loaded. Now I'm going to play, uh, get ready to play some games here. So as you see over to the left, I have my different categories, Dreamcast, Game Boy Advance, PlayStation, and Super Nintendo. So we're going to start off with some good Super Nintendo gameplay. Maximum Carnage. Oh, man. Oh, this One of my favorite Spider-Man so games. much fun. So we'll we'll be quiet and let you sit back and watch some of the emulation videos. Alright, so now to close this video, or this game, I'm going to hold in the start button for two, two seconds and the menu is going to pop up and you have the option to close content. This will bring you back to your RetroArch menu where you can select another game, which here's our next game, Power Stone. Oh, this game was so good. Yes, it was. They need to re-release this in game, the really. Century, people are strong believers of... Surprised they haven't, to be honest with you. Welcome to Power Stone Wars! Of course, you have to select the Super Saiyan. Yeah, so the the one that looks like Faye off Xenogears of there, he turns into a Super Saiyan and you collect all the diamonds. So this is kind of like, I would, I would compare it to like Super Smash Bros. or Dreamcast. 
but a lot, you know, more three-dimensional instead of 2D side-scrolling. Well, 3D side-scrolling, I guess, is a more accurate term, but... I like how you can pick up everything and just throw it at people. Like that. And Super Saiyan. And again, just to clarify, this is running on my Xbox Series X. This was recorded straight from that console. So you can see here it handles Dreamcast emulation very well. Very, very which well. Are, which are a lot of games you really can't get access from the community. Except for emulation, so. Forgot there were guns in this game. <laughs> And Spirit Bomb. Yeah, Spirit Bomb. How you pick up the gun, you're like, nope, I'll just beat him with my own hands. <laughs> I was trying to shoot him. I forgot the controls. It's been a while. But as you see, they're running super smooth. Um, 60 FPS. So the Series X, and even the Series S can handle this emulation really, really well. Okay, so we, we have two games we wanted to show you. This is mainly just to kind of show you the potential of the console. Um, you can put many other games on there, like PlayStation, uh, Sega, all kinds of other um, emulators are available on the Series X through RetroArch. So we hope that you enjoyed this video, maybe a quick start guide to kind of get started, then you can kind of go further into it. But as you can see there, it played the games really well, um, and it gives a nice all-in-one emulation solution, I feel. Um, that a lot of times emulation and Mike will probably agree with me here. It's daunting if you've never been, if you never got into it. Yeah, it looks intimidating, especially from a PC perspective. But this is exciting because you can put it on your console and play it in your living room with ease, all through your controller interface. Pretty. It's just really exciting that this is something we can do. I mean, uh, we've talked about it before how disappointed we are in the PlayStation not being so backwards compatible and being able to take the Xbox and with developer mode, do things like this and have those games, like you said, on a console, just right in your living room, you can pick up and go. That's what's so great. Before we were having to do this on like PCs, like we made a small PC, we put it on there, like we did the retro PC, um, retro arc PC game video that was very, very helpful. Good controller on that, but this is just so much easier once you get it set up to do and run. You don't have to worry about turning on the computer or messing with any of that. You just turn it on and go. Yeah, and another thing too, this puts a whole new perspective on the Series S. It has the same emulation performance of the Series X pretty much because the processor is almost identical. Yep. And the processor is where a lot of your emulation uh, heavy lifting occurs. So... Even if you can't afford a Series X, but say, you say to yourself, man, I'd really like to play some of these older games, though. Get you a Series S. You can do the same thing to it. So it, it, it really, truly is exciting. Uh, I look forward to RetroArt maturing on the Xbox platform. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment down below uh, with any questions that you may have. And uh, if you would like to see us test some other games on the Series X, uh, Retro Art Platform will be more than happy to do so. As always, I'm your co-host, Corey. And I'm Mike. And we'll see, see ya! ya.